I'm Inger, he's Elmo, and this is Brutally Honest Talk Radio. How are you doing today, Elmo? I'm doing very good. That's, very good. Thank you. That's good. Busy week, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a busy, upside-down, topsy-turvy kind of world. I believe, yeah, yes. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, especially in the world of politics. Just to yeah, just to start there, just to start there, and I know a lot's been going on. So, what do you have on tap for us today? Well, uh, three main things today. We're going to talk about the Rand Paul Fauci smackdown, okay. right? The Rand Fauci grudge match two, <laughs> because they're they're back in the news, and those two little guys are going at it. And talk about the Simone Biles controversy, who was in the Olympics. Yes. Uh, one of, if not the greatest gymnasts of all time. We're going to talk about the Cleveland baseball team because they finally okay. got a name. They're, they're no longer the Cleveland Orphans. They actually have a, a name and a home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So it's going to be Rand Paul and Fauci, Simone Biles, and cleveland so where would and you much, like much to more. start and hey, much well, much more absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so where would you like to start yeah we're gonna start with talking about the cleveland baseball team okay. now i'd mentioned earlier this year or last year the cleveland indians which is what they've been since my father was a little boy mm-hmm. that had to change that had to go away because 90% of all Native Americans were okay with the name. They were right. okay with mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. But because of the Antifa style, I'm going to stand up and fight for you, even though you don't want me to, whites and other races and woke virtue signalers, truth justice warriors, it had to go away. So yes. the Major League Baseball or the the Cleveland Indian baseball team or management, they buckled, they gave in. The people of Cleveland, including the Native Americans of Cleveland, didn't want the name to change. Okay. Okay. But it did, it did, first, it didn't even, like I said, it didn't even change at first. It just went away. It was just, it was just a Cleveland baseball team. We know what happened with the Washington Redskins, and they are the, the Washington football, football team. team, yeah, the Washington football team. Uh-huh. So now people are in the audience. Go football team! Go. Nobody <laughs> does it like the football team. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Ra, ra, ra. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Washington Generics. The yes. Cleveland Sterols. <laughs> it's just um, I I don't understand how they're so quick to change everything. To change the Cleveland Indians to now the Cleveland um, Guardians. I think that's what they were called. It, it is the Guardians, right? Cleveland right. Guardians, and apparently there's some historical significance around that, oh. um, saying that they were like the Guardians of the city, and there are some statues around there to that effect, and there's history behind, like like real history, not you okay. know made up stuff. But it's just um, it sounds more like a college team than it does a a, a pro baseball team. So, you know. Like the and the, Trojans, Gladiators, or Spartans, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't it just calling them, it's like calling them Bulldogs, you know, <laughs> and nothing against George <sighs> Bulldogs, UGA Bulldogs, but it's just, you know, I, I don't know yeah. why they would go and change it when most of the people were just fine with it. Yeah. So what they've begun to do is listen to the loudest voices, although those mm-hmm. loudest voices are not necessarily the um, majority. And that's what people have a problem with. It happens in local politics. It happens all over the place. Just the people who are yelling the loudest think they're in the majority just because that's all they're hearing. When the folks who are not sharing their position, there's actually more of them. They're just not the loudest. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting phenomena. And I figured out that's what the Democrats are basically doing is they're going after the squeakiest wheel. Yes. Because many, many of the things that they say that they are for or against or whatever is important, people were talking about 20, 30 or 40 years ago. But because it may not have the popularity 
or because it may not be loud enough. Mm-hmm. You know, n- not not even. Yeah, I guess the squeak is wheels, right? Because you can right. have mm-hmm. you can have twenty people over here complaining about something, and then you can have one or two people over here throwing a tantrum. Right. 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 Looking like a crazy voodoo witch doctor to set on fire. They just <laughs> spinning around like a jumping jack. They don't know what to do with themselves. So we need to go and focus our attention on them. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I I never see the faces of these people. But the Cleveland Guardians, I guess they thought that would be a safe enough name. Like, usually a team name is indicative with the city, something representing the city. Like, we just had the the Phoenix Suns. Yes, the Phoenix Suns. In the basketball finals, you know, because very hot in Phoenix. Yes. And, you know, there's the Detroit Pistons because that's the Motor City. Yes. You know, now we got something could be any city in America. There's well, nothing unique true. nothing unique about Cleveland at all. That's <laughs> true. No, you're right. <laughs> but hold on. Two or three years from now somebody could be complaining because a guardian could be another name for a police officer or a soldier. Ah, because that's true. police serve and protect and, and they're somewhat guardians and so somebody may may get affected. Yeah, affected and infected and offended by that. Yes, that is very so true. It's a good let's point. Get too. Some, let's get some adhesive stickers to put on their baseball caps. Don't embroider anything yet, because you might be you might be changing right. it real soon. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. They, they didn't ask anybody. They didn't do any test marketing that I know of. And I'm a, I'm a baseball fan. It's my favorite sport. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, it is official now. Logos uh-huh. are pending. We That's don't know what, what this is going to look you. like. <laughs> I don't know. When you when you said some uh, historical significance mm-hmm. with guardians, I'm wondering what's the race of those guardians, or oh, were they just yeah. Cleveland City, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Cleveland <laughs> citizens, and and I, I don't know. I guess I guess they'll get back to us on that. On that, we'll have a question. It's sports related because I do not yeah. watch sports. What are mm-hmm. they going to do with all the merchandise that they've created with the Cleveland Indians names? Like, what happens if a fan, a baseball fan, has Cleveland Indians baseball jersey, mm-hmm. and now the f- name is being changed to Cleveland Guardians? So, what happens to that stuff? I mean, that the person owns is it? Now, collector's item is it no longer yes. valuable? That's what they'll do with it. Okay, I was just wondering. I was because it just it just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, it's I was wondering what happens. Gonna become a collector's item and a rarity, God. and a uh, an artifact. Okay, <laughs> right. well, a lot of people are probably gonna take their jerseys and caps and put them in a time capsule. Right. And, 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 and not open it for 50 years because it's going to going to become so hard to find. And then they can say this is an authentic cap mm-hmm. from 2020. The, the right. last one that they that they made because, you know, they're going to they're going to stop making them now. Right. Yeah. Right. And caps in, in uniforms, jerseys, they get worn out That's and true. they got to replace them. So if if since they don't have any more. If people keep wearing and using the ones that they have, apparently they'll look, you know, uh, worn out and rugged. So right. if you if you take one and you just lock it up, then who knows what what that could be what that could be worth later you know, on in, in a few decades. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Interesting. Did you hear the latest debate from Anthony Fauci and Rand Paul? Talking about the uh, the lab in Wuhan and the the gain of function research. Okay, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Long story short, Fauci funded the gain of function research in the Wuhan lab where COVID was released or discovered or whatever. Is is that the case? Yes, that is okay. what evidence is pointing to. That is what Paul is presenting. Okay. And um, Fauci or his team, they funded research where they experimented on animals in labs in okay. Wuhan, China, which resulted in uh, uh, the viruses spreading. 
or, okay. or being uh, easily or more easily transmissible to humans. Okay. All right. So from what I heard, and we're, we're going to play some of that, is Fauci is kind of trying to divert or change the subject by saying, talking about the science of it, saying, if you're saying that the molecular structure of the cells in the lab changed from this to that, it's like, wait a minute, one, one potato chip at a time. We're not talking <laughs> about that. We're just talking yeah. about, did, did, your, did your money go to this lab? Or another lab in Beijing, or where? Where is your money going? You know, let's just let's right. just answer that first. Let's follow the money. Mm -hmm. Let's hear some of the latest WWF Fauci Paul Smackdown. <laughs> Dr. Fauci, knowing that it is a crime to lie to Congress, do you wish to retract your statement of May 11th, where you claimed that the NIH never funded gain-of-function research in Wuhan? Senator Paul, I have never lied before the Congress, and I do not retract that statement. This paper that you are referring to was judged by qualified staff up and down the chain as not being gain of function. What was, when let me take, finish. You take an animal virus and you increase its transmissibility to humans, right. you're saying that's not gain of function? Yeah, that is correct. And, and Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about. <laughs> and I want to say that officially you do not know what you are talking about let's okay you get NIH. one person let's read from the nih can i answer gain the of function this is your definition that you guys wrote it says that scientific research that increases the transmissibility of uh, transmissibility among mammals is gain of function they took animal viruses that only occur in animals and they increase their transmissibility to humans. How you can say that is not gain of function? It is not. It's a dance, and you're dancing around this because you're trying to obscure responsibility for four million people dying around the okay. world from a pandemic. And let's let Dr. Fauci. I have to. Well, now you're getting into something. If the point that you are making is that the the, the grant that was funded as a sub award from EcoHealth to Wuhan created SARS-CoV-2. That's where you are getting. Let me finish. We don't know. We don't Wait know a minute. It didn't I come from the lab, but you. all the evidence is pointing that it came from the lab. You, and there will be responsibility for those who funded the lab, including yourself. I totally This committee resent. will allow the witness to respond. I totally right, So start there. Now, the last thing that Paul said, he's right on. <laughs> right. I mean, people hate being pinned to the wall, but come on, let's let's figure it out. So this this apparently is a Congress, a congressional uh, hearing. OK, this is Congress. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to going to just jump to the to the end of it. OK, uh, so that you can hear uh, what this what this person said. Thank you, Dr. Fauci. And thanks to all of our panelists for being here today. And uh, thank you, Chair Murray and Ranking Member Burr. Um, I just want to say, Dr. Fauci, is there anything more that you would like to say to counteract these um, attacks on your integrity that we've all just witnessed? Okay. I don't know wow. who that woman is, but we can find, we can find out. We can get her name. But, uh, yeah. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, that, a lot to that's not taking sides at all. Right. You know, your, your, attack, your attack on your integrity, okay, well, whether your behavior is integral or whatever your integrity is first we need to bring out the facts and see if that contradicts what you said exactly i mean and my, mm -hmm. yeah, and go why ahead. it's so defensive that's my thing because you're going to sit there and tell a senator who is a doctor himself you don't know what you're talking about blah 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 it's you know there are, there's a way that you can craft this so everybody's kind of respectful to each other you know, mm -hmm. I believe you're mistaken, Senator. This is kind of how it goes, um, you know, based on reports, research, blah, blah, blah. You just don't tell them they don't know what they're talking about when you have the guy who has been leading 300 million people around by the nose for the last 18 months <laughs> and have been going back and forth on the mass, no mass vaccines, vaccine. And let me just say, I think it's a, the people people realize this COVID. I think people will do what you ask them to do. I think the angst is now 
the mixed messages that have been going back and forth from the, from the CDC. And as the representative of the CDC, Fauci, I place this on him. He has, it's been confusing and he has been confusing. He goes back and forth constantly. And I think that's what, what people are tired of. And that's why people are like, you know what? I'm done with it. <laughs> you know, it's just. And you notice, you notice Fauci used the word COVID. You know, he said COVID yeah. because that's a scientific term. Right. <laughs> COVID 2, COVID the sequel. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, what is that supposed to be? The Delta variant? We're not talking about a later strain. We're talking about at the very beginning of this and the inception of the pandemic, which right. was December of 2019, January 2020, when it first infiltrated the United States. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I mean, you, you, you get your notes together and you, you want to know exactly what you're what you're saying. What did he, what did he think uh, Rand Paul was going to come in here and talk about? Pinochle? Exactly. You know, how, how's your how's your wife doing? What did he think? Yeah. What do you think they were going to talk about? Is, and he has to expect that it's going to be a um, contentious hearing. I mean, if right. if he's been listening to any kind of radio for the last 18 months. You should walk in there. But the thing is, understanding that you should walk in there, prepare, walk in with your facts. This is, you know, X, Y, and Z happened this date, time, and place. And here's proof of that. I mean, get your get your things together. If Because if he comes back at him like he did, <laughs> then all he's going to do is just make everybody else suspicious. Like, well, he likely doesn't know what he's talking about because he's getting all up on the ceiling. Just yeah. for being questioned about the budget, <laughs> aka taxpayer money, and what that was used for. <laughs> and a, a a doctor or a scientist or any professional person should be able to talk about this and articulate what they want to say without getting upset. Absolutely. And I, I resent you. I resent you saying that. Forget all of that. You bring the facts forth and your facts can combat what paul said that's, that's all that's all that matters that's you it you know what i'm saying don't make it personal don't try to say i mean wh why are you why is it why is it hurting your feelings that he's coming at you just yeah. just answer answer the questions and you know that's i'm the it. kind of person if i i don't have an answer if i don't have an answer or maybe you asked me something that i hadn't yet thought of or worked out mm -hmm. i need to i need to say that right Right. It's, it's, be, it's better to just say that, you know, not that people are sitting around twiddling their thumbs, but my time and my attention has been spent on this thing, on mm -hmm. these things and sorting these things out. The mm -hmm. question that you just asked me, I hadn't considered that or don't have an answer for you yet. We'll get back to you and we'll get back to you by this date. I think that's, that's fair. I think that's completely fair. That's completely, and that's how you would handle it. I mean, that would be the professional right. way to handle that instead of getting um, getting personal, getting all emotional, that sort of thing. And by handling it, like you said, it would take the heat out of the situation and it would bring everybody's temperature down because, you okay, I'll go, go away from it and then we'll come back to it. And that just takes the emotion and the heat out of the situation. This, this is a city and this is the school board for that city talking about COVID-19 in the schools and how bad it is. And th this person who is a citizen, I don't even know if he has children in the school system, but he is confronting them and he did a, he did a very good job. So let me, let me play this and then we'll, uh, we'll go in and speak about it. Okay. Uh, video of a young man confronting the advisors in his city uh, at the Board of Supervisors meeting. So let's play that for you. To us. Uh, before I, I go further, though, I'd like to address Ms. Wilma Wooten and that propaganda that you were sharing. This, this is not factual. We've actually, uh, being that we are not Cuba yet or North Korea, we still have access to the Internet. And it's beautiful because your department has done a fantastic job of documenting the deaths in this county. So what I've done is taken that information which you've provided to uh, to ensure that I'm an informed citizen and I know when you're lying. 
So here we go. Uh, April 2021, there were 147 people who died in this county. Whatever the positive tests say with this PCR test, which we know to be unscientific and be used at 45 thresholds, which makes these positive tests false positives. We know this, and we also know that 147 people died in this county in, in the month of May. Or, uh, forgive me, April. So let's go to May. How many people died in May? Miss Wilma Wooten was talking about how all these people are dying. 54. We had 54 deaths in the county of San Diego. I don't care about the positives because obviously the PCR test is bunk and we know that. So let's go back to the deaths because that's hard evidence that we can use. In the month of June, how many deaths did we have, Nathan Fletcher? 80. How many residents are in this county? 3 million? 3.3 million residents in this county and we're using propaganda that Wilma Wooten is using from the PCR test that we know that has been tested to be bunk because we've had 80 people die in this county. How many rights are we going to take away before we look at the facts? We know what you're trying to do. There are good supervisors up here that are trying to fight for freedom like the Constitution, but where are the rest of you? Why are you silencing people and using this jargon to scare us into submission? When are you going to speak the truth, Wilma? We're calling you out because we, the citizens of America, are tired of these lies. We get lied to regularly. We're used to these lies. Who's going to stand up for the truth? Oof, and that's where he ends it. When you're going to speak the truth, Wilma. Yeah. All right. So um, let me let me say a few things about that. It, it was San Diego County. I want to say that every school board every city they're responsible for their own actions we know that there's a there's a high probability that if this is going on in this district that is going on in in other districts across the country anywhere that people are trying to control citizens how much or how little or to what degree evidence needs to come out and prove that mm -hmm. but i'm listening to this here i am in atlanta Hearing this story, seeing this thing about a guy in San Diego that that was from the the local news, you know, mm -hmm. once something gets on the local news and then that local story hits YouTube, it's like a worldwide thing. You're just not going to see it on television, right? You know, so mm -hmm. this this young man who looked to be in his early twenties had long dreadlocks and a baseball hat on to the back. And just right. coming in there with a T-shirt on. He's not dressed for a meeting or anything formal. Mm -hmm. And and look look at the intelligence and the way this person is confronting this school board with no rebuttal. They don't have anything to say. This woman uh, Wilma, who he's talking to. Mm -hmm. So this this is. I, I just want people to see this or hear this and and let it let it be a message. This this is what it takes. There's all there's all kinds of unsung heroes and people that will never be be famous to stand up where you are in your community, where you are. But this man said that he did research. Mm -hmm. They published something which were embellishing the numbers, embellishing the facts. They had the audacity to publish that, knowing that it was wrong. That means that they are counting on you and I to be stupid. True. Exactly. And to not and to not research it. Mm -hmm. We're going to put this lie out there because we expect you to believe the lie. Right. Right. So yeah. mm -hmm. you know, there, there's there, there's never there's never any research that's done or fact checking which would turn out to be a waste of time. It is true, and and the fact that folks don't have any what is it intellectual curiosity. Yeah. About they just take it. Okay. <laughs> but like that young man, he did the research. He had questions. He sought out the answers to the questions that he had. And what he discovered is that he was being lied to. And and like you said, there's no rebuttal. When you present the facts, there's no rebuttal. You know, they can if and if she had come back at him, it likely would have been with emotion because again, he's presenting the facts. You can't dispute it, you know. So um, folks need to get intellectually curious, start asking questions and seeking out the answers to those questions. And it is okay to question. You're supposed to question. 
Yes. Nothing, you know, and nothing in regards to this going on should be a flat out, um, you can't question and and this is it and, and that sort of thing. There's no, it's okay to question. People expect you to. And if they're on the up and up, then they should be able to answer the question. If, and like you said earlier, if you don't have the answer to the question, I will get back to you, you know, that sort of thing. And that's all that need, needs to be done. So, um, but yeah, yeah, smart young man, very smart young man. And you mentioned a term called intellectual curiosity. Yes. To me, intelligent people are curious. Right. Like that is a very intelligent thing. Mm -hmm. You should, you should want to know, you should want to know what's going on. You're at the epicenter. So in your community and what's going on in other parts of the country and around the world, that's, yeah. that's kind of the only way that you know, if you're in hot water or how things are, how should things be when you change, when you change race, location, country, government, how much do people and behavior change? Like this is okay. something that, that we need to know. That's true. And uh, I, I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I love the fact that he said there's been 51 deaths in the month of May, I believe it is, with mm -hmm. 3 million people in that city. Yeah. So you think about the fact that uh, just the number of shootings, just, just the number of, of people who die from shootings, there's another number of people who get shot and live. That is right. astronomical. Because mm -hmm. most of the people that get shot do live. Yes. Again, yeah. something else that doesn't make the news. But mm -hmm. every major city in America is, is going to have, like, I would say 300 to 800 shootings a, a year. You know, murder, murders with a gun a year. Right. You know, in, 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 one, in one city. This is a county that he's talking about. And 800, I guess that would be closer to like Chicago's numbers. You know, they're at that that end of the scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, no one. I, I mean, if you think about it, that that's so dangerous. You know, like these little pellets or mini missiles that are flying around, it make it unsafe for people. But no one is locking anyone down and saying, "Don't go out." <laughs> right. No one. No one has ever done that. It's a very strange thing. Uh, people from Detroit know of a club called the Dancery. Okay. And I would say two or three times a year, there will be a shooting at this club. Oh, what wow. would happen is that the following week, there would be no one there. I mean, if you drove past, no mm -hmm. cars in the, in the parking lot. Okay, it, It's open, but nobody's going there because word spread about what happened last week. Mm-hmm. One week later, the club is packed. Okay. <laughs> We're back to normal and life as usual. Wow. How's it going? Play some DJ <laughs> and I have a drink. It's like, you know, people just, what, what, we, uh, what we accept is normal, I, I guess you would say. Um, so, yeah, for the, this, they, they never said this man's name. So, mm -hmm. to, the, uh, to the anonymous articulate citizen that we just heard from is there anything else you want to say or add about him um to him that's what we're about that's what america's about courage standing up when things don't sound right and challenging we're we're to get involved in the government it's what is the saying we get the government we deserve well yeah. we if we want a better government then we have to be better citizens and that's not necessarily doing everything the government says do, but is standing yeah. back, coming back, challenging and questioning your government and the people who hold office. Because again, these people, they're just regular people. They, they, the only thing they did was get elected. That was it. Yay on them. But now they still have to be accountable, you know, but very smart young man. Glad, you know, he's a young, young guy. Yeah. So hopefully he'll keep going forward and continuing to press the issue and um, holding our elected representatives accountable. And it is a country of the people by the people. So yes. really, if you live here and you're a citizen, you have to check the government because they literally work for you. Yes. What, whatever laws, whatever is in place is supposed to be of the people, what the people want. 
Absolutely. Now, sometimes there are disagreements mm -hmm. in society or with the people, but that is why we vote so that the majority can rule. But yes. the majority can't rule and you can't know, uh, let it be known how you feel or anything if if you don't get involved, if you don't check them and you don't you don't make sure that they're representing you. And that's it. Precisely. Uh, I don't know if you heard about uh, Simone Biles in yes. the Olympics, or if you follow Olymp the Olympics at all. Um, I've heard that she is that she quit in the middle of an event, and that um, she was doing it for her mental health. Um, and there's a lot of energy around that. You know, there's so many different aspects of this. You have the um, the mental health issue that she's saying she has to do this. Then there's the physical health issue. I think something called twisties that gymnasts sometimes get. And it sounds like it's a, it's about disorientation and everything while you're in the air, your body's doing one thing, your brain's doing another. Um, mm -hmm. Then you have the, the black woman thing. Don't come after the black woman, blah, blah, blah. Then you yeah. have, well, at least she didn't kneel down into the flag <laughs> and that sort of thing. And then you have, you know, another thing, well, people out here can't even do cartwheels and they're coming after Simone Biles. So it's like, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. It's, just, it's a lot. It is a whole lot going on. Um, how do I feel about it? I, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I think there's the aspect of quitting on your team, um, number one, and quitting on yourself, number two. And I think there's another issue where the the timing of her quitting and dropping out, um, you just, I think that's where a lot of the energy is that I've seen around it is the timing. It's like, I think people understand mental health issues and physical health and that sort of thing. I just think there's the issue in the middle of an event and you're, yeah. and you're doing this and your team is depending on you and that sort of thing. It's, it's, um, you know, I think that's where I stand, as a matter of fact, with it. I, I have an okay. issue with, you know, doing it, the timing of it. So I'll, I'll say a few things. Yeah. Uh, number one, she has, uh, this is not her first Olympics. Right. She has been a gold medalist and a winner for several years. Um, we know just from the last couple of years that it is, it is expected for athletes to get involved in speaking out, saying things that are not related to sports about the way that people are treated or uh, quote unquote social injustice, especially for black athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, many of the players on Kaepernick's team, they began taking a knee because they don't want to stand out. They want street cred and all of that. So I'm, I'm just saying that to say that. I haven't heard anything from her uh, getting involved in politics or saying that kind of thing, and I like that. Mm -hmm. Now, she she accepted a position to be on the Olympic team representing America. Great. Like, I always want America to win, and I don't apologize for that. Right. I saw the swimmers last week doing the 200-meter races, and then they interviewed Michael Phelps. But well, they okay. came after him because he he smoked weed or had had weed in his system. Yeah. But he 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 had some mental health issues that I didn't know about. He mm -hmm. said that five years ago he started touring around and um, enlightening people about different things related to mental health because of what he has dealt with himself and saying mm -hmm. you know there's no shame in it and things like that. So. Simone is a member of the American team. I believe that she is a patriot. I believe that she wants to win for, I mean, it's not just obviously for her, but for a team. And I, I, can't, I can't say what it's like to be in her shoes or what she was feeling. She did things, she has done stunts and acrobatics that no other human being has ever done in the Olympics. Right. Mm -hmm. She she has done things 
I mean, Mary Lou Retton has to reach up. She wishes mm -hmm. that she could have been the gymnast that this woman is. That did that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking about an amazing athlete who obviously has confidence in herself. She's done things that other athletes won't attempt to do because they don't believe that they do that triple somersault that they will be on their feet when they need to be on their feet on the way down, mm -hmm. you know, or coming off of that four inch wide beam. Right. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. So I, I'm just saying, I, I believe that she, she wants to win. She wants her team to do well. Um, I don't know if by her dropping out that um, what's the word for it, like a forfeit that would cause the team to forfeit. And as much as I want America to bring home the gold, I believe that one's personal mental health is more important than that. When you got countries getting into it, it's more like, you know, the pride of the country, but yes. it's still a segment of entertainment, you know? Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll say that. And then the, the last thing uh, I've heard comments saying, well, why should we not put our feet to the fire? Because if LeBron James did the same thing, would we not expect more of him? Like if LeBron had the guts to say that because of mental problems or, or, you know, whatever anxiety or was going on in his mind that he needed to, to leave during halftime in the middle of NBA finals, if he decided to do that, if he said that, I'm not going to, I would, I would treat it the same way. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you feel like you need to do that. There's uh, what? Six guys on a team that could be on the court at one time, but there's 20 guys on the whole team. So if y'all are truly a great team, you should be able to get somebody else to to Definitely. take your place mm -hmm. if, if you can't do so lebron hasn't done that so i really let's compare it to you know someone one else who who has done it i'm just saying uh yeah and I, I do believe that you should treat athletes equal however like <laughs> this is the last last thing is <laughs> like with with basketball you got all the members of the team are on the court and playing at the same time yes. with gymnastics it's a solo act Yes, it is. Yes, you're a part of a team, but one at a time. You go out there by yourself while the whole world is watching you and some people betting on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah. in, in that sense, there's more individual pressure. True. Very true. Um, and uh, I, would, okay. I would hope that she talked to her coaches about it and and that sort of thing. I would hope that she, prior to making this decision when she made it, that she yeah. had talked to somebody uh, that this was going around in her head and that sort of thing. Um, yes. You know, maybe that's something if she talked to somebody like a coach or maybe she or a parent or something like that, right. they would say, you know what, maybe you should sit this out and and kind of get get yourself together, get your sea legs back, and yeah. then go forward. Maybe that right. would should have been the discussion. But uh, yeah, and I hear what you're saying. And, and she definitely, she's never knelt for the flag. She's never. She's very respectful. Yes. She's yes. all of that. You know, and, and talk I, to talk to a coach and not yes. announce it like flash in the five heartbeats when you get yes. on stage to accept award. By the way. I'm going solo. My new album is coming out in two months. I right. already recorded the whole thing. Right. And Robert Townsend, everybody's looking at you like, what? Huh? What, what did what? you say? <laughs> Where was I when this was going on? <laughs> when I walk off the stage, we have officially broken up. <laughs> right. I'm no longer a part of the group. So, right. yeah, like, yeah. I, I, hope, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this if he hears this. And I'm not going to say his name, but I have an uncle who uh, lost his leg in oh. an accident in in a factory right he's mm -hmm. working uh working in in some factory in the 70s and he he fell into this pit where there was this gear that his his foot got caught in and the gear started going like this you know up up his up oh. his leg oh gosh. so he, he had to he had to have it amputated oh my goodness and uh 
I guess the I don't know if it was the city or the company paid him. Now we're talking about the late seventies where he got uh you know, I was a kid when it happened. So what I remember is something like between three hundred and fifty, four hundred thousand dollars. Wow. You know, which is a, a, so it was a lot of money back then. But mm. if somebody came to me and they said, Do you want the use of both your legs or a million dollars? Which one do you want to take? Right. I'm gonna say my leg because that that's Absolutely. a part of health. Absolutely. And being being able to have you know, life where you can, you know, you, you you can just run and jump or whatever it is. So, uh, he, he took the money, he should have taken it, but I'm in agreement with him. I think when I say that, <laughs> you know, things could have, could have gone differently, mm-hmm. you know, n- nothing, you can't put it, you can't put a price on that. No. Yeah. And basically put a price on, you can't put a price on your health. I don't, I don't know if you heard of this movie called in the Heights. I have not. This is a movie with the all Spanish cast that is about Washington Heights section of New York. Okay. Right. This was uh, this was released this spring. Soon after it came out, or you know, less than a week, there are people complaining that there's not enough dark skinned Spanish people in the movie. The Afro Caribbean and the Dominicans and the darker skinned Spanish people. They're watching the movie, like noticing this, mm-hmm. and and it became a problem. Even though Spanish people are like black people, where there's ten different complexions. Right. Now the the star of the movie, I've seen the the young man, and he's a lighter skinned Spanish person. But I, I never I never thought of Spanish people in this way. I, I don't I don't know if these are Chicano, like they they live in America and they're kind of spoiled. Or if they, these are people in the Caribbean countries, because some studio picked up this script and decided to give it national distribution and spend millions of dollars, spend millions of dollars on a film with, you know, it's a Spanish story with all Spanish cast, which Mm -hmm. is, which is like a huge thing, or you call it an accomplishment, maybe. And instead of that, like dividing their group, it's not my group. But it's dividing their group or dividing people, you know, and then some some people, they hear that and they go, yeah, you're right. I didn't know about it till you brought it to my attention. But now, second thought. All right. All right. Where what's what corner are we going to stand on now and yell about this? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so Goodness gracious. Like the, the same thing that I say when people are talking about there's not enough black people nominated for an Oscar. Give me the names of the black people who were in films mm-hmm. based on their performance. Thank who you. you think should have been nominated so that we don't have the affirmative action Oscars. Right. Which is where we're headed if this keeps up. Mm-hmm. We know Denzel was a great actor and lots of white actors. I mean, uh, Casey Affleck who was Ben Affleck's brother. When he got best actor, he stood on stage and he looked at Denzel Washington in the, in the audience and said, Denzel, I've been watching you for 20 years mm-hmm. and I, I look up to you and I, I hope that one day I could be as great as you are. Wow. You know, it, what I'm saying is recognize the people for their talent. So, you know, I, I don't want to see that in any group. I don't want, uh, I mean, you got Luis Guzman. And you got uh, Jean Carlo Esposito, and you got darker skin Spanish people or Spanish speaking people that are good actors. Like that's right. that's what I want to see. <laughs> you know, put put them in there because they're talented. So for for those people that are complaining about that, that that's what you need to present. You need yes. to present what you want, or else the studio is going to go. Well, these people are saying we don't have enough people that look like this, so we need to put some more in there, and then you're going to get trash. That's it. I said, and and the story is going to be either true to form or not. I mean, if there if the story wasn't there, then it wasn't there. I mean, if if they weren't there, they just weren't there. You can't if you're going around filling jobs because of a quota. Like you say, you're not going to get the best. You're just going to get a quota, and yeah. um, then that's not good for anyone <laughs> at all. And it shows you that while they were watching this film, they must have not been paying too much attention to the story. Right. 
Absolutely. On that note, thank you for listening to this episode of Brutally Honest Talk Radio. Leave a five-star review for us wherever you listen to this podcast. And don't forget to hit the notifications and subscribe button on YouTube so you're updated when we upload a new episode. And with that, we will talk to you next time. Have a great week. Have a great one, and we'll catch you later. Bye now. Thank you for listening to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out at BruteHonestRadio at gmail.com. That's B-R-U-T, Honest Radio at gmail.com.